supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be like in the old days a little bit. And that's why I love this shape. There's a lot of money in the pocket that people would like to spend. <laughs> This ship, where we are now, is a history. This is the story of an impossible cruise, the story of an unmentionable dream, to sail on the most luxurious boats in the world. Don't take a thing with you, because once on board, all you need is to snap your fingers. In the shoes of a billionaire, you will cruise through paradise islands, journey to the past, or hoist the sails on boats that are passing into legend. These gleaming hulls often conceal a mysterious world. Few are they who are allowed to penetrate into the bowels of these incomparable vessels. We had the exceptional opportunity of filming a few days aboard these monsters of the seas. Our voyage begins on the biggest sailing ship in the world, the Royal Clipper. that it's not a floating hotel like some of the bigger cruise ships are which I mean they're very nice too and they fulfill their purpose but here people can come and actually go sailing okay. they can actually see the sails going up and they can feel the sailing you know and yeah you might get seasick from time to time but it's it's in a more classical way it's not all modernized and it's supposed to be beautiful it's supposed to be like in the old days a little bit and that's why I love this ship somewhere off the coast of Croatia. I myself, as a captain of the Royal Clipper, have the honor and pleasure to confirm here and now that those two persons, both dedicated and ambitious sailors, are exchanging those rings as a sign of truth and of love. I hope that you will come on board of uh, Royal Clipper every year on September 22nd to celebrate this wedding vows. <laughs> to celebrate, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Enough pleasantries, Captain Sergei. Sure, the champagne is flowing abundantly, but it's nearly six in the evening. The passengers on the biggest sailing ship in the world are waiting for the rigging. Gradually, sweet atmospheric music swells. The great adventure is about to begin. Ready? Coming out! It's good wind, eh? We can sail at least. Music is, you know, <laughs> a lot of people like this music. They are crazy for this music, and of course for the sales also. A minimum of effort, and 5,000 square meters of canvas are hoisted. In a few minutes, a journey back in time begins. It's much more pleasant to be on a wooden boat like this than on one of those American floating cities, one of those huge ships. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes? I get goosebumps. Freedom. It's great. Calm. It's 
It's a dream come true. On the bridge of the Royal Clipper, this gigantic five-master, Captain Sergei has exchanged his ceremonial uniform for something more comfortable. Best moment of the day is when we're leaving as usual. Sails coming up with this music and sun is coming down, sunset. Yeah, it's uh, something you see, you, you feel yourself when you're on, on open deck, very close with the mother nature. Yeah, really. It's something, yeah, very personal, yeah. I have universal license, I can be on, on any motion ship, yeah, really, for me it's not a problem, yeah. But you know, the point, of course, I like sailing. First of all, why I'm on board, I like sails, I like sailing, yeah. This one is the main idea. And of course, I feel myself also like, a, not maybe what you say 100 years ago, like a 500 years ago, like a Vista for Cologne, I feel myself also sometimes like this, yeah. When you have sails up. What's changed? Nothing changed. Yeah, it's only 500 years. What is it for Mother Nature? It's nothing. Yeah? Attention all stations, all square sails. We leave the Adriatic coast for clearer and warmer waters. And We're expected aboard the Alicia, which has dropped anchor a few cables off Sri Lanka. Among the owners of the big yachts, you find those who were born with a silver spoon in their mouths, and the others. Fifty years ago, this man was at the wheel of a combine harvester. Today, after having made a fortune in the bakery business in London, Andreas Liveras is at the head of a floating empire. He owns the most expensive yachts in the world, ships that hire for a million dollars a week, excluding extras. This is luxury. This is where the king or the prince or, or a film star or someone who can afford to pay, this is their dream to be in this boat. Their dream to be even for one hour, for one day, for one month. We have people charting that long. It's, it's, she is a beautiful and it's, she's no com there is no comparison in the world. Once aboard the Alicia, it's almost like a ritual. Andreas Liveras loves to remind his guests that before he built one of the most expensive yachts in the world, he was a simple Greek Cypriot farmer. We don't have blood inside, we have sea water. All the Greeks love the sea and we love the sea and the boats and this goes through the families. And our best place, of course our favorite place is the boat. Uh, we have a lot of houses and a lot of uh, factories and so on, but um, the boat is our, um, uh, our pride. Andreas has come to spend a few days on his yacht. He's accompanied by his granddaughter from London, Natasha, who is discovering the Maldive archipelago for the first time. Natasha is also the name of Andreas's first boat. That was at the beginning of the 80s. between all the islands is by yacht. So that's what makes it such a, a unique experience for me, traveling around on the yacht to the beautiful islands. I can't think of anything better, can you? Let's see if you can afford it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, the people that come down here are <laughs> yeah, very wealthy. Yeah. Very they, they don't all have a grandfather, do they? <laughs> no, not one like you. <laughs> They're very lucky. Usually, the Grand Yachts would spend the winter in the Caribbean, but now, and Mr. Liveras has decided so, the Indian Ocean and the Maldives are the fashionable destination. Okay, 
On the enormous bridge of the Alicia is a faithful retainer of the Liveres clan, Captain Nikos. He's not the least reluctant to compare his system of navigation with that of the Queen Mary. I cross all the Atlantic Ocean with uh, Gale, not a Gale, all these days, two weeks, but uh, three days we had very hard Gale. With stabilizers, not any problem. She comes overboard, but she was going uh, straight without any deviation, but very nice. So it's not a floating hotel, it's also a good... Uh, good, good, good for navigation, it's uh, very good for navigation. Uh, I never afraid uh, to cross all the oceans with that vessel. Bubbles, more bubbles, always bubbles. This is a real luxury for Andreas Liveras, who thinks the cruise is getting off to a good start. After four days aboard this mega yacht, it's high time for us to go and see what's happening over in Turkey. In the Bay of Gocek, a strange looking barge is moored right against the cliff. This is where Mr. Karaman spends his weekends. He moves his floating house according to his whims, and especially to those of his wife. Every bay has his own charm here. We love Gocek, we love this area. My wife sometimes, she paints, and she likes that I move the house every week in another bay because she's painting the other bays, you know. <laughs> now she has a good collection of the paints and the bays. But it's so relaxed place, so relaxed, it's so beautiful. A wealthy ship owner, Mr. Karaman is at the head of the biggest shipyard in Istanbul. He adores everything that floats. His house is surrounded with toys of every sort, and one of them is a big one. Moored a few hundred yards away, the Savarona is a former steamship. 136 meters long, built in 1931 in Hamburg for a rich American. As always, Mr. Karaman is in a hurry. When he's not on his luxury barge with his wife, he loves to spend a few hours aboard his big white boat. He sees this vessel, the Savarona, rather as a vast floating living room, a beautiful reception room, which he charters from time to time to wealthy clients. Aboard Savarona, the staff are already on the alert. Mehdi, the head steward, is looking out for the boss's arrival. Savarona means the one kind of swan in Africa. And way, if you see the way she's designed, and when she sails, it's beautiful. Beautiful when you go around, uh, you know, Greek island, or the coast of Italy, south of France, beautiful to sail with, and very, very nice ship to sail. For a moment, we leave Mr. Karaman to meet up with the passengers on the Royal Clipper, which is sailing south. 